Understanding what we mean by path difference and phase difference is crucial to understanding the harder topics of interference in waves. <laughs> Go through this activity really carefully and you'll get a really good understanding of how wavelength, time period and phase are all related. Aside from some of the basic definitions that you should have got from GCSE, in A-level you need to have an understanding of what phase angle and phase difference mean. Check that you do have good definitions of these before you move on to phase, because waves can be a bit of a confusing topic. The pattern shows a continuous wave. The rate at which the end is vibrating. The frequency of the vibration. We can increase the frequency, say, to three cycles per second. This, you probably know, we call the wavelength the distance from a point on one wave to the corresponding point on the next wave. Speed is the wavelength times the frequency. Check you know what a longitudinal wave is and how you can describe a sound wave. Check you know what a transverse wave is and how you can describe light waves. And check you know what the wave speed equation is. But really importantly, check your understanding that there are different ways that we can graphically represent waves. And these are examples here of sine waves. The top one is a graph of displacement versus time. So it shows you how an individual particle behaves as time goes on. And the bottom graph is a graph of displacement versus displacement. So it shows you how the displacements of the particles in a wave vary as you move through space. This is an activity you should definitely do if you're starting out learning about waves in A-level physics. I'm just going to do a set of values of phi, which is going to be an angle, and sine phi. I always tend to make an error of leaving my calculator in the wrong thing and I'm working in degrees right now. I'm going to work in radians later, so bear with me. You might well know those values from maths, but it is well worth for your understanding going through and doing them with the calculator. Then we're just simply going to plot those values. So what I have there is what we call a sine curve, and that is a graph of y versus phi. That is displacement in the y dimension, so if you can imagine a wave having particles oscillating in the vertical direction, versus angle, versus phase angle. Now just to show you that phase angle can be in degrees or in radians, if we set up our calculator in radians, then we'll get the exact same values. So I'll just do a few key ones. 90 degrees in radians is pi over two is one. 180 degrees is just pi. That's back down to zero again. 270 is three pi over two, so that's one and a half pi. And then 360 is two pi. So I could just as easily have on here pi over two, pi and three pi over two, and just two pi. So those angles are exactly the same, the maths works in exactly the same way. We can express phase angle in either degrees or in radians. You just need to make sure that you are have your calculator set up in the correct one whenever you're using it. I always like to pop mine back to degrees because I do a lot of GCSE teaching. So that's useful because well now we've got a graph of a displacement in y um, but our maximum is one. Well, what is that value of maximum? Well, in a wave, that value, that maximum one is, it's not just one, it's the amplitude. It's the maximum displacement from the zero position. In the opposite direction, in the negative direction, this is minus the amplitude. So if I have an amplitude of seven, then I just multiply all these values by seven. If I wanted to plot a graph of the amplitude versus phase angle, then instead of having sine theta, I would have a sine theta as being my term, and I'd calculate all of those. This gives our first and really useful equation, which is for the amplitude of a wave, the displacement y at any point is equal to the amplitude sine of the phase angle. Confusingly, sometimes we do use x as being this quantity here because that's our basic term for displacement. And this is a graph of displacement in the direction of the oscillation versus the phase angle. So what about if we're not dealing with the phase angle? What about if we're dealing with the time period? Or indeed, what about if we're dealing with the horizontal displacement? 
So there are two other types of graph that you can come across, which is a displacement versus displacement graph for a wave or a displacement versus time graph for a wave. They look exactly the same as this graph, but the angles look different. So I'm just gonna make a couple of copies. So these graphs don't represent the displacement versus phase. This one represents the displacement versus displacement. So this is like a picture of a wave in two dimensions. This one here, this one represents the displacement versus time. Now this here is the length of one full wave. So this is a wavelength. And this point here is half the wavelength. So this is lambda over two. That displacement at that point there is lambda over two. And so on and so forth. This would be lambda over four. And this would be three quarters lambda. So we have then a graph now of displacement versus displacement. And similarly down here, this value here of t is the time period. So this value is half the time period. This value is a quarter the time period. And this value is three quarters the time period. What you need to be able to do to master this topic of waves is you need to be able to calculate the displacement at any point in this journey along the wavelength. So you could be given any value, any distance at all, any path and you need to work out the displacement at that point. Similarly, you could be given any time on a wave journey and you could be asked to calculate the displacement at that point. So it's all about knowing how lambda relates to phi or indeed how lambda relates to two pi or 360 degrees. So there is a conversion factor between phi and between the wavelength or indeed the wavelength and phi. So let me just express that for you in simple algebra. For the displacement graph, it's what fraction of the wavelength are you through multiplied by two pi, that's the phase. For the time period graph, then the phase is what fraction of the time period are you multiplied by two pi. So if I want to write an equation for this line, then I'm just gonna substitute all this in instead of my angle phi here. And if I want to write an equation for this graph, just substitute my expression for phase into this graph here. I hope that's useful to you. It's really important that you can kind of visualize and you can use these sine wave forms, which all waves and indeed all simple harmonic motion conform to. Simple harmonic motion or SHM is a topic in year 13 which builds on your knowledge of waves. You can of course check it out now in the Gorilla Physics Simple Harmonic Motion playlist. A good example of this is a CD or a Blu-ray or DVD. They are optical recording devices and the way they work is they have had pits and lands carved into them corresponding to ones and zeros in digital code. So the land is a slightly raised bump and the pit is a laser etched mark and the depth of the pit is a quarter wavelength. The depth of each pit is a quarter of a wavelength deep. And that means that laser light, and the characteristic of laser light is that all of the photons, all of the waves are in phase. So when you have laser light landing on either the pit or the land, the reflected laser light comes back having traveled half a wavelength further. So we can say that there's a path difference of half a wavelength. It's had to go there and back a distance of a quarter wavelength, so the full path difference is half a wavelength and half a wavelength path difference corresponds to pi out of phase or pi phase difference or 180 degrees phase difference. So where one records a maximum, records a peak if you like, the other records a trough. So interpreting whether we have a peak or a trough, essentially whether it's in phase or pi out of phase, we get ones or zeros of our digital code. That's being demonstrated here with these rather large optical discs which are using microwaves and the microwave emitter and receiver is a 2.8 centimeter microwave. So they've used bumps to represent the lands and then the surface of the disc to represent the pits. And the bumps are about three quarters of a centimeter, something like that deep. And so that the microwaves that are received by the receiver shown by this needle here are reflecting as either maximum or minimum. So you can see ones and zeros. You'll need to understand this really well to get the higher order concept of interference. Because to understand interference, you have to combine the idea of path difference and phase difference to work out points where you get constructive and destructive interference. Constructive interference is when you have the two waves in phase. So there is no phase difference between them. And that happens at points where the path difference is a multiple of the wavelength. 
So when two waves are in phase, then their peaks and their troughs line up and they constructively interfere to make one wave with a larger amplitude. Destructive interference happens when peak and trough line up. So we say there is 180 degrees of phase difference, or in other words, they are pi out of phase. And because peak and trough always line up, you, they add up to get nothing at all. And that's a really amazing thing when you think about it, that sound and sound can combine to make quiet. And light and light can combine to make darkness. As we roll along, moving the detector, once again, we go through a series of minima, maxima, and minima. I'll do a longer video in a short while about interference because it's crucial to understanding experiments with light. For example, the diffraction grating experiments. So you really need a good, strong understanding of the difference between path, phase, and time. And graphs can show wavelength, they can show time period, and they can show phase. If you got that, if that was useful, just comment boom in the comments below. And don't forget to check out gorillaphysics.com for all my videos organized by topic.